deforestation, flooding, greenhouse gases, climate change. These are just some of the massive problems that are affecting our world today. In relation to that, about 15 billion trees are cut every year around the world to supply our global needs for paper. Our daily needs for paper are always increasing, but our global supply of trees is constantly dwindling. In fact, we're cutting way more trees than we can plant. Now, how do we solve this problem? What ways can we do to reduce the amount of trees that we cut daily to supply our needs for paper? Well, in a world where it seems that the only solution is to go big, 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 how about we go small? Microorganisms are important to practically all processes on Earth. From nutrient cycling to biotechnology, they can do just about anything. They may even surprise you, but yes, microorganisms can even become paper. I call what I did in this research microbial paper, a solution that I'm proposing as an alternative to conventional papers made out of trees. Produced from Acetobacter silinum, which is a species of bacteria that produces cellulose, microbial paper is strong, flexible, washable, and can hardly catch fire. And yes, it works just as well as normal paper that we're using every day. Here's how it's made. We start off with starter culture, coconut milk, and different levels of sugar and acid to produce different types of paper with varied thickness. We mix it all together into culture trays and leave them to ferment for either 4, 8, or 12 days and at different temperatures. All these factors can make the paper really thin or really thick. Once the growth period is done, you harvest the film, you clean it, and you put it through a mechanical dryer. What I did is test the microbial paper that I produced from this research for quality evaluation so that I can compare each treatment's thickness, tensile strength, transparency, printability, foldability, color, and texture. In simple terms, these are just some basic tests that are done to know the viability of any paper. What I found out in the study is that film growth is influenced greatly by the amount of sugar and the temperature of the environment. In fact, the microorganisms used in this study favor warmer temperatures, which is a good news for the Philippines. Once put through the dryer, the film thickness decreased drastically as expected, shrinking to about 90 to 99 percent. The highest level of tensile strength for the day 4 treatment is 12.9 psi, for day 8 it's 77.76 psi, and for day 12, 175.81 psi. The substance of microbial paper I produced from the study ranged from 21 GSM, which is the usual substance for regular paper, to a whopping 424.38 GSM, which has a high fiber count. This means that we can produce microbial papers that are way stronger and don't tear easily. It's also worth noting that the immediate product of the microbial paper is somewhat transparent, but I don't see this as a problem because washing it makes the color opaque, which is the usual color that you'd usually get from any paper. Also, ironing it out on low heat using a flat iron removes its creases and crumples brought by washing. After subjecting the microbial paper to washing and ironing, it folds just like the usual paper without cracking, and it can be written on just like any other paper on the market. All these results give microbial paper loads of potential applications that cannot be done with usual papers. Number one, microbial paper can be used as edible food wrappers. Imagine you're eating your favorite shopao without having to remove the paper underneath it. Second, even if microbial paper can be washed, you don't have to worry about blotting your drawings and scribbles or anything you print on it. Imagine getting your modules, and then it rains. Now, you don't have to worry about ink blotting or losing what's written on your modules. Third, do you know how expensive Cappy's shells are? You know the ones that we use for windows and Christmas lanterns? Microbial paper can actually be an affordable substitute for that. The thickness of microbial paper resembles the typical cappy shells, and the best part is that microbial papers are stretchable. This means that you don't have to worry about shattering your windows or Christmas lanterns ever again. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Even if this study proved that microbial paper can do so many things, I still recommend a wider evaluation for paper applicability, like in the medical field. I would also promote microbial paper as a special material for our paper bills, as an added feature of security for our banknotes. Lastly, I believe that more studies should be done to explore the vast possibilities of that microbial paper has to offer. As a young researcher, I believe that we have ways to protect the environment by taking advantage of natural resources like microorganisms to make our lives more eco-friendly and sustainable. After all, it's the small things that matter.